Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. My name is Rob and this is the KV Cabinet Channel. And I have here a door that I just got done running on my CNC. It's a just a kind of a simple design, um, but I thought it'd be cool to make some cabinet doors with uh, some cool designs. Uh, I plugged this design into VCarve Pro. It only took me about 10 to 15 minutes or so to get it set up. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're using a DXF file, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I, I took that file and I got to this point right here. So let's get to it. to getting DXF files um, there's a lot of resources online a lot of places you can buy uh, pre-made DXF files I mean you can always make it yourself um, with either like uh, I think Illustrator does DXF uh, SolidWorks um, uh, you know there's a lot of programs out there where you can do it yourself but uh, if you just want to, to download a DXF that's already pre-made. There's plenty of options out there and for the most part um, the biggest thing that you have to deal with when you take it into VCarve Pro is uh, scaling uh, and maybe joining some of the lines. So I'm going to jump into VCarve now and I went ahead and I made a new job and it's just a, a 4x8 sheet of ply, uh, MDF and to start, I'm going to create a door, and we're going to say my door is going to be 14 by, by 34, so 14 inches wide, 34 tall, that looks good. Um, when we take this, we're going to hit move, I'm going to move it down to the bottom left corner. All right, there we go. And we're going to make this a shaker style door, so I've got my styles and rail look um, all the way around, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do an inner offset of two and a quarter. All right, so this is the this is the door. So this inside part is what I am going to uh, apply that that image to. Um, so I'm gonna actually import something that I got off of Etsy, uh, so that way you can see how that works believe it's this one here um, yeah so these are just uh, pat it's just a pattern pack that someone made so I, I purchased these uh, with my own money but you can see they gave me one two three four five six seven eight but we only want one right here and it's obviously not the size we want it so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete everything except for the one we want um, if we take a look at this, I'm going to hit move, let's move it just down to the material. If I come in, okay, we can see that not only is it the right size, but a lot of these lines, probably everything is not connected. So we're going to have to go through and join everything um, that needs to be joined together. Like if I hit J on the keyboard, um, it lets me join that so now if I click it at any line it selects uh, this entirely so whenever you import uh, DXF files chances are you're gonna have to go in and rejoin lines because um, it probably is not going to come in uh, joined so I'm gonna go through this now and I'm gonna pause the video and I'll come back and see I'm just gonna go through each shape and um, Look if I hold shift and I click that, hit J, and there we go, we're joining it. So I will go through this whole design and join the lines and then I will be back. Okay, so I think I got everything joined. And if I missed something, I will find out whenever we go to assign tooling to it. Um, so whenever you're buying anything or a DXF or if you're making something yourself like a lot of you this design is going to be 
it's heavily dependent on the kind of tooling you have um, as to what you're capable of doing. So always keep that in mind when you're when you're either designing or picking out a, a something you want to do. You got to make sure the tooling can do it. And in this case, <clears throat> we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill and an eighth min eighth inch end mill, and I think we'll be okay. All right, so now. I'm going to move this over here. So now we got to get this design to fit this uh, panel. So the easiest way for me to do it is I'm just going to measure the width. And I'm at nine and a half. And then on the height, I'm at 29 and a half. So nine and a half and 29 and a half. So I'm going to select this whole thing and press T for transform. I'm going to unlink it here. I'm going to do 9.5, enter, 29.5, and there we have it. Cool, so now all we have to do is move it over into place. And so we know that this is two, two and a quarter, and then two and a quarter here. So we're going to select this whole thing. And actually, before I do that, we're going to... We're gonna do. We're gonna make some layers here real quick. So we're gonna create. We're gonna put base layer, and we're gonna move this to our. Well, oh, we gotta hit enter. That's right. And so we're gonna move these over to our base layer, and then let's create another new layer and call this. Oh, design one. We're going to have a couple. Let's make this, I don't know, orange looks good. Let's put, for now, we're going to move all this over to design one. And that way, if we need to select it, it doesn't get hidden behind um, any of that. So now we're going to just hit move. We're going to press M. Well, we're going to select this. <clears throat> and we're going to press M for move. And we're going to put two and a quarter and two and a quarter. And that should put us there right in <clears throat> the center. So that's exactly where we want it. So, all right, we're gonna make, I'm gonna, looking back at my original design, there are, there's a couple changes that I wanna make. And one of those is I want these pockets to be, uh, I had everything at a quarter inch deep and I wanna keep these at the quarter inch depth, but I want these inner designs to not go as deep. Uh, maybe only an eighth or three sixteenths or something. Um, I think that would look look better, at least you know, for my, for my eyes. So we're gonna separate some of that out. So what I want to do first is I want to select and I want to group all of these together. These these shit designs right here. All right, we're gonna come right here and group it. And let's make a design to, oh, I don't know if I'm even spelling that right, but I don't even care. Um, let's just say like a blue. And then we're going to right click and we're going to move to, well, design two. All right. <clears throat> so... This is going to be, this color is going to represent a certain depth, and then this color is going to represent uh, a certain depth. And, all right, so now that we've got these grouped, we're going to kind of, we're going to group everything else together, because as long as we're pocketing it, whenever we apply a pocket pass, it's going to look inside the closed lines as what is going to be pocketed. So in this particular design, we can get away with grouping things like this. Um, sometimes you cannot. Uh, but in this one, we can do that. So we're going to group it. So now, and what it helps you do for, for one, you can just apply one tool operation to, to each group and it, it makes it so much quicker assigning tooling uh, but you can you can only do that in certain situations and this one it does work out for us 
So this is pretty much, uh, I, think we're, I think we're good here as far as getting it all drawn out. And I think we're good to move over into the tool uh, assignment. So we're gonna click this, switch to tool path, and, and here we go. All right, like I said, I think I'm gonna go a little deeper with these than these, so. I'm gonna select this, we're gonna go to the pocketing. I'm gonna get rid of, well, we're just gonna use the quarter inch and eighth inch for this. So we'll just leave it at pocket one. Let's take a look what we got. So if we preview, So the quarter inch is going to do most of the work and then that eighth inch is going to come behind it and hit the corners. So that looks pretty good. Alright, so now let's take, take these, let's do the same thing, um, but we're not going to take it a quarter, we're going to take it, uh, let's go. 0.125. Let's just see how that looks. Okay, so so here I guess I didn't. So here's what you're gonna see if you didn't close all the lines. Um, let's just hit OK, and if we go into 3D view, if ever you don't know and that error pops up, go ahead and run it because if you see right down here, it's this one right here that was not closed. So if we go back to 2D view. And we go back over. Well, let's let's untick untick our tool paths so we can actually see. And if we come down now, the unfortunate thing <clears throat> is that I have to ungroup everything. But that's just the way it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna hit J, join. Okay, we're good. So now I have to regroup. I'm holding shift by the way. Regroup everything. Now go back. And we're actually gonna delete these. We're gonna redo it. One, two, five, hit calculate, and there now we don't have any errors. Uh, so if we preview visible. And it's maybe hard to see in this 3D, but I think it's going to look better with this not as deep as this. Um, maybe you could even go shallower, but we'll leave it at that. I think it kind of creates the, uh, so it's not an illusion, but it makes like the squares look like they're popping out from the, from the, these deep pocketed areas. It's cool. I like it. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to run, actually there's two more things, but I'm just going to run a quarter inch bit, but we're going to do it that same eighth inch, and we're just going to run it around that inner line. This is all preference. Uh, we're going to do on the line, I'm just going to hit OK. And this just kind of gives a border. Um, kind of separates, it kind of, I don't know, it just gets in order. I think it looks better than not having it, so we're gonna go with it. So then the last thing, we're just gonna cut this thing out. So we're gonna do, this one's gonna be profile. We wanna go the full three quarters. And this one, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch uh, end mill. We're gonna go outside. It's a compression bit on my machine. And we'll just do final cutout. Hit calculate and preview visible. Double click here, and we have our door. Yeah, I think it looks pretty sweet. And so again, it's 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 really that simple. And, and you know, with with all the resources online, uh, as far as like buying files and stuff, there's a ton out there. 
Uh, but it's like I said, you just got to be aware of what tooling you have and compare it with the designs you want. Because there's a lot of designs out there that are, are more uh, probably geared for like laser cutting, things like that, so they can get super fine detail where, uh, you know, doing wood, you got to make sure you got the tooling to do that. But anyway, hopefully this was a uh, helpful, cool, or inspiring video for you guys out there. I am going to start working on, I've been very busy, but I want to do some videos where I do some actual 3D uh, carvings on the insides of some of these doors and make some cabinets uh, with some cool 3D carvings. Uh, but anyway, hope you guys have a good uh, morning, noon, night, whatever it is for you, wherever you're at, and I'll see you on the next video.